This is the story of Michelle Ferreira and her quest to become a higher level teaching assistant. We'll follow her every step of the way. If there's a person who can do it, it's you, Michelle. I'm feeling a bit nervous and apprehensive. And she'll even be documenting some of it herself. Wish me luck. <laughs> Michelle Ferreira is a senior learning support assistant at Plumstead Manor School in London. What did you forget? The... Man. The glue. Miss Ferrer's fun. She makes us laugh. She's a good key teacher. She she's good at helping us. We're going to switch on the tap. tap. I love being an LSA because every day is different. I mean, you get involved with the children and you can see them progressing. That's the really buzzy thing about it. They you can watch them learning, and that is what it's all about. A little bit. Michelle is always keen to push her professional development Bigger. forward. Bigger, I'm bigger, going for bigger. the HLT a status um, because I want the recognition and they can give me more responsibility because I've got the proof that I've met the standards and I am working at that level, so bring it on. <laughs> Michelle's line manager, Lorraine Donovan, is an HLTA herself. Okay. It's really good that you've decided to do your HLTA, Michelle. Even though it's not a qualification, it's that sense of self-belief that it gives you. Um, and it's certainly changed the way I feel about what I'm doing. It's given me a lot more confidence. And, yeah. well, you know me, I thought I had confidence before, but... Oozing with it. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, Michelle will take the first big step towards becoming an HLTA. Bye, everybody. Bye. She'll be attending a course which will get her thinking about her own practice in the classroom. Excellent for TAs because so many of them are taking such a big role now in teaching responsibilities that it offers them a career progression and a professional status. It's a way of demonstrating that they are able to be an effective professional within the classroom in a way that will have impact in the classroom on the learning of the children. It's really important that teaching assistants' roles are recognised in the classroom because they play such an important role. They need to be rewarded, they need to feel valued. Many of our teaching assistants would choose not to take up teaching as a career and yet they have found that they have talents that can benefit a school and benefit them and they want to be able to have the opportunity to use them. Michelle arrives in Lewisham for the first day of a mandatory three-day preparation course which will help her get to grips with the professional standards she'll need to meet in order to achieve the status. I'm feeling a bit nervous and apprehensive, but um, I've obviously been on courses before, so um, it's just a bit of an adrenaline rush at the moment, but I'm sure it'll be fine when I get in there. I always get nervous with the candidates myself because I know how important this is to them, and I know uh, the road they've travelled so far to get here, and they come in very tense, very nervous and I just try and put them at ease. All HLTA candidates need to write up four tasks and provide evidence to show they are working to 33 professional standards. If you're in this room today, you should not need any more training to meet those standards. You're ready to do that. We're just here to find out how we present the evidence that you do. So, Michelle and the other candidates quickly get to work on activities that get them reflecting on their own practice. Advanced learning and working with whole classes without the presence of the assigned teacher. Fortunately, I've had an experience of that and I've also said to them, now that I'm going for the HLTA, um, can I you know, maybe start the lesson so that you know, the, the, the children are more used to me being in front as well. During the day, Michelle and the other TAs work on various exercises all intended to help them when they come to write up their tasks and collect their evidence. Have sufficient understanding of the areas of expertise to support the development, learning and progress of children and young people. Obviously at the moment they're perhaps a bit of kind of information shell shock um, from facing the 33 standards that, you know, cold off this morning. Yeah, I think it's uh, quite difficult. I think some of it is, it's the jargon they use. I think it is differentiating. I've just come back from the second day. We had to get down and, and start writing our tasks. So we had to go at writing task one and two. I think we feel a little bit more confident that we can actually do something. And um, 
now we have to, to actually do a proper draft of our tasks one, two and three before we go back for our third day. <laughs> okay, thank you. One of the main tasks requires TAs to reflect on taking a whole class without a teacher present. Today, Michelle is going to give a lesson that she's planned with the guidance of her teacher. We're talking about... The purpose of today's lesson is to have the girls try on the makeup on each other and doing it on each other because it gives them the experience of making somebody else up rather than themselves and it's about cooperation in, in, that, in that way. They're having you know, a, you know, a good time experimenting, which um, is all part of life. You look lovely, especially you've got your hair. Look at this colour as well. You look really good. Having done two lessons on my own, I'm feeling you know, quite good about myself, you know, so sort of quite chuffed. The form teacher who normally takes this class has been uh, very supportive of me doing the HLTA and I explained to her that I would be needing to do some of the lessons and she said yes, um, definitely go for it. That is um, really why I'm going for the HLTA because I'd like the added um, responsibility and the challenge of course. It does mean a lot more work but um, you, get, you, know, you get what you put in, don't you? Now it's um, nearly a week since this um, HLT process started and um, they suggested that we had a few days break from it all, which is what I've had, and um, I've been shopping um, because it's half term, but um, I've now got to obviously focus on the tasks ahead. I've come into the office and there's nobody here, obviously. This morning, because I've come in to do some work for my HLTA, I'm actually going to be using the computer. I can't do it at home because my sons are always on the computer but um, there's dedication for you. I think a good starting point when writing tasks is to encourage teaching assistants to just tell the story. And without actually focusing on the standards, it's important to actually start to write. They're reflecting back on something that they've already done. I think it's good to focus on the first three tasks first. You're working with your individual child, your group, and then with the whole class. Look carefully at your evidence. It's got to be things which are evidence of what you do. The best tip I could give a teaching assistant is that each piece of documentary evidence is very clearly labelled with a rationale for why they think it meets that particular standard and that that rationale is short, concise and to the point. Michelle finds some time to work on her tasks and starts writing up the makeup lesson she taught. I've been um, getting together some photos from the makeup session. So they, they came out really well, so I was very pleased with those because the girls need these for their ASDAN folders as their evidence, but I'm also going to use a copy as my evidence, so um, it's twofold. I, I keep reading a little bit every night. I think the more I do that, they, it seems to make sense a bit, but it, um, I don't think I'm a quick learner. I'm a slow learner, so I just need to plod along. It's half past five in the morning, and I'm not sleeping, thinking about my HLTA. Looking out of the window, it's another foggy, misty day. That's exactly how I'm feeling about the HLTA. I've got some ideas, but I'm not quite sure whether what I'm saying is the right sort of evidences that they're, they're looking for. Um, so I'm hoping to have a chat with uh, line, my line manager, Lorraine Donovan, and um, who's been through the process already. So perhaps she can give me um, a bit of guidance. A few days later, and Michelle's found a moment to meet up with Lorraine. What you've done is good because you have actually said the how and why. Yes. that you've done things, yeah. okay, which is going to make it much easier for you to actually link that up to these standards. What I think would be good for you now is if you actually go through this, you pencil down the side which standards that you think are connected, mm -hmm. and then I'll go through it with you, and you can tell me why you think that makes sense. So here we are. I mean, you, yeah, and you've definitely yeah. got a 19 here as yeah. well. Devise clearly structured activities that interest and motivate learners. See how I, th I thought that was, but I wasn't obviously quite sure. Yeah, I think they did show us that. So the yes. whole point of this really is to make it very clear to your assessor when she comes in, these are the standards that I've met. You know that you're competent at meeting them, and this is the best example I can show you on the tasks that I've written. Okay. Okay. 
but mm. very good. You, you're well on the way to coming up with some excellent tasks. The actual assessment half day itself, I was incredibly nervous about beforehand, but it wasn't nearly as daunting as, as I'd expected it to be. We're not looking to catch candidates out. They are actually talking about what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, all those positive things. As an assessor, um, it's my responsibility for moderation purposes. I have to write down um, verbatim everything the candidates say in those meetings. The assessor will not give them an outcome because um, that he knows and she or she knows that their judgment will be moderate or possibly will be moderated. It's great when the assessor turns up actually because as, as a head teacher it's my opportunity to tell the assessor just how fantastic I think that the teaching assistant is. For the purpose of this film, and to give insight into how the assessment process works, Jenny Fry from VT4S has agreed to assess a recently qualified HLTA. Just can you please give me examples of times when you have been responsible for teaching a whole class without any teacher present? With the teacher, we did a plan um, so that I would take out the whole class to do an ICT poster on recycling. Okay, so then you wrote down the plans? Yeah, and then okay. I prepared the lesson. And prepared the lesson. It's very important for us as assessors to be impartial and that is difficult for us too uh, because we want to say that's fantastic, what a brilliant idea, um, you've done really well but we are not able to and so that's where our professionalism has to play a big part too. Thank you for doing that and um, I suppose really we should be thinking of you as someone who's there um, to help us get through this so you're asking the questions so that we can give the best answers that we can do rather than thinking of you as the enemy. We want to do the best job we can for you. Be confident that the questions aren't going to be about anything that you don't already know about or already practice. When I was assessed my assessor seemed to help me a little bit by rephrasing the questions and I actually found the process okay in the end. Mm. When the letter actually did drop on the door, Matt, I must admit when I opened it I was like, oh no, what is it? And when I saw that I'd passed and I got my certificate, I was really, really pleased. Yeah, yeah, I imagine that would be lovely. It is. You went to school and said, yeah, I did, I did. I actually <laughs> text my um, deputy head and went, I've passed. Yeah. <laughs> The best thing about being an HRTA is the professional status and the opportunities that it's given me in my job. Well, I would say don't be frightened of it, absolutely go for it. It, can, it will only benefit you. I've seen what the, the HLTAs actually have to go through in order to gain that status. I, I'm incredibly proud of them because I know it's, it's, it's hard work but it's something that they've wanted to do and something they've wanted to strive to achieve. It's a wonderful link between the teaching assistants and the teaching staff and they're there in a sort of pivotal role. It's so positive, it works from all sides and ultimately the children are the winners. It's been a good experience and reflecting on, on my practice. Um, I'm already feeling you know, more confident about the future and um, the, doing the HLTA is, is what's given me that extra confidence, I suppose, so I do feel empowered about it.